What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. On today's edition of Gear Gods Quality Control, we're gonna be taking a look at the orange little base thing. So what is the little base thing? It's little, it's a thing, it's for base. It's a base amp head, obviously. We've got it today powering this orange 112 base cab. We're using the SE Electronics V-Kick, which is kind of a kick drum mic, but it's also for base cabs. And we're also going direct out of the DI from the little base thing. So that's the sound that you're hearing right now. And this is my Kiesel Guitars JBM5 jazz bass. I love it. Like most Orange products, it's dead simple. Even if it has a lot of features, it doesn't have a whole lot of English words on the front panel. And I don't know if they do that to save space or like Glenn Fricker, they think that bass players are dumb and illiterate. I don't believe that that's true. In fact, I've imported a bass player from faraway lands who is far smarter than I, and he's going to do most of the demonstrating on this. We'll get to that in a second. So what I've been able to decode from the hieroglyphs that are printed on the front of this, we've got a volume knob, that's obviously extremely important, a compressor, uh, unless it's a, you know, the clamps, it's a clamp, it's a picture of a clamp, it means a compressor, treble, mid frequency, mid cut or boost, and bass frequency. And then over here at the input, we have a pad. This is something that's extremely important because it's very common for basses to be active. More common, I think, than for guitars, which is, there's still a lot of those too, but if you don't have a pad on the input, sometimes you can clip the input and get a clipped sound before you even get to the other parts of the amp, and that's no good. For example, this is an active bass, so if um, this isn't on, I won't be able to turn the volume all the way up. It's all bad, so having a pad, super important. And then we've got the foot switch jack, because you can turn the compressor on and off with a foot switch, that's also extremely handy. So long story short, it's an extremely compact six and a half pound, basically all in one bass head for clean sounds. Doesn't have any kind of distortion, grit, gain, overdrive, fuzz, anything like that. It's kind of a platform for you to plug in your distortion effects or any other kinds of effects. Um, you can put it into the effects loop, which it has on the back. And of course the foot switchable compression can give you kind of a, a, a boost in perceived volume um, or kind of actual volume depending on how you have it set versus the output volume. The amp is completely solid state. It's a solid state front end, class D power amp. There's also a DI XLR out in the back as well as the speaker out. Um, it's a dual speaker out so you can run it in stereo or you can run two cabs if you like. We're just doing the one that we've got mic'd up but we're also recording the DI out so that you'll be able to hear the difference between the two and what they sound like. So the cool thing about the compressor, which is just a one knob compressor, pretty simple. This blue LED right here is the power light. Nothing that special about it, right? Except that it turns red when the compressor is working and it does it in real time, so. Cool. Honestly, there's not a whole hell of a lot that I can say about this amp. It's extremely simple, it's very self-explanatory. It's got a bunch of great features and I'm gonna demonstrate them all for you right now as I basically get the hell out of the way and let the amp speak for itself. I'm gonna let my friend Gernot Schwab, who is an amazing bass player, <laughs> plays in the bands May the Silence Fail and Subconscious from Germany. We imported him all the way here just to do this demo. That's not true, he's here for Nam. But you know, I'm gonna let him play, I'm gonna turn the knobs. Let's see what it sounds like, here we go.
Really, there's only two little things that I didn't really dig about the little bass thing. The fact that the volume and compressor knobs are stepped as opposed to being continuous kind of bugged me. So here it is all the way down. Here it is at the first step and then, like that's an enormous leap. The compressor's up pretty high right now, but still. And then secondly, the fact that the DI output is post volume, which means that you can't set the speaker out volume and the DI out volume separately, which would be really nice. That's not incredibly common on bass amps to have two separate volume outs, but that would be super nice. I know there's not a ton of room on this little thing to have all kinds of knobs and stuff, but if I could suggest two upgrades, that would be them. Continuous volume and compressor knobs and a separate little mini knob on the back so you could set the output volume for the DI separately from this. Because let's say you want a little more stage volume and you want to go and you go and you turn it up and your front of your house guy's like, oh, why is it clipping now? It happens, shit happens. Just like the orange Terror Bass head, which is all tube, but a lot smaller. The little bass thing is loosely based on the AD200 bass amp from Orange, except that it weighs like a tiny fraction of what the AD200 weighs. Uh, I like the sound of the 8200 a lot, but the thing is a billion pounds. This is six and a half pounds. Honestly, I kind of liked it better than the 8200. I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong, but this one is just very clean all the way through. I like to use pedals for bass, for example. The Orange Bass Butler that we demoed on here pretty recently, that would pair very nicely with this, or like the Dark Glass X series, which is my favorite. Something like that pairing up with this would be great. It's more than just a pedal platform though, you know, you've got the EQ controls and the foot switchable compressor. So if you don't use any kind of grit sounds in your playing, then this could this could be all of it. If you watch this channel, then you know that I'm a weak and lazy man and I don't want to carry big heavy things so that I can play rock and roll music. And this uh, is high on my list of things that um, I would take with me to play a gig if I were to play bass. It's super light, it's very small, but it's super powerful, extremely loud, and really, really very clean sounding. So something like that combined with this EQ section, which is extremely flexible with this uh, sweepable mid frequency that I haven't really seen in a whole lot of bass amps. That's gonna really allow you to shape the sound of your bass and make it fit better in the mix or stick out more if that's what you're going for. You can scoop or cut a very specific frequency in the mid range to get your bass out of the way of the guitars, out of the way of the like a lower singer, anything like that. Or you can boost it up so that it's sticking way out, whatever you want. That's why it's a knob and not a button. So anyway, that's the little bass thing from Orange. I think it's pretty cool, but I wanna know what you think. So as always, mash that subscribe button, smack the bell to join the notification squad, and drop us a like, and leave us a comment letting me know what you think of the Orange little bass thing. And I'll see you real soon.